May I request everyone to just keep their fo mobile phones on silent mode. May I request our President, uh, Mr. Vikas Singh and Mr. Pradeep Rai, Vice President, to kindly escort Honorable Mr. Justice N. V. Ramanna, Chief Justice of India, <coughs> Honorable Mr. Justice A. M. Khanvilkar, and Mr. Vikramjit Banerjee, Learning Additional Solicitor General, to the dais. May I request Mr. Vikas Gupta, Member Executive SCBA, to kindly present a bouquet to Honorable Mr. Justice N. V. Ramanna, Chief Justice of India. May I request Mr. Gaurav Kumar, Member Executive, to kindly present a bouquet to Honorable Mr. Justice A.M. Khanvilkar, Judge Supreme Court of India. <clears throat> May I request Mr. Mukesh Kumar Singh, Member Executive, SCBA, to kindly present a bouquet to Mr. Vikramjit Banerjee, Learned Additional Solicitor General of India. Due to uh, <laughs> learning attorney general couldn't be here because he was just recovering from COVID and uh, learning, learning solicitor general also is COVID positive, so they both could not be here. So we requested Mr. Vikramjit Banerjee, sir, to be here with us. Honorable Mr. Justice N. V. Ramanna, Chief Justice of India. Honorable Judges of Supreme Court, Honorable Mr. Justice A. M. Khanvilkar. Mr. Vikramjit Banerjee, learning additional solicitor general of India. Sri Vikas Singh, our president. Mr. Pradeep Rayar, Vice President, Mr. Manoj Kumar Mishra, President Skora, <coughs> Senior Advocates and my fellow colleagues at the bar, a very good evening to you all. First of all, I wish to thank Honorable Mr. Justice N. V. Ramanna, Chief Justice of India and Honorable Judges Committee of Honorable Mr. Justice B. R. Gawai, Honorable Mr. Justice Surya Khan and Honorable Mr. Justice J. K. Maheshwari that finally a long-standing issue of chamber allotment in this very complex is finally resolved and hopefully members are going to get their chambers in the next 10 days. A big round of applause. <laughs> Today we have gathered here to bid farewell to Honorable Mr. Justice A.M. Khanvilkar, who before his elevation as a judge of Bombay High Court in, in the year 2000, had practiced in this court for a period of 16 years from 1984 to 2000. Sir, in his tenure of around six years as a Supreme Court judge, has delivered landmark judgments and he has been a member of this bar, and most of the old people would have practiced with, sir, and we are going to miss you a lot, sir. May I now request Mr. Pradeep Kumar Rai, Senior Advocate, Vice President, SCBA, to kindly give his welcome address. Honorable Chief Justice of India, Justice N.V. Ramanna, Honorable Justice A.M. Khanvilkar, Honorable Judge of the Supreme Court of India, Honorable Judges of the Supreme Court of India, Mr. Asok Bhushan, Honorable Asok Bhushan, the Chairman and CLT, Mr. Vikramjit Banerjee, ASG, Mr. Bikas Singh, President SCBA, Rahul Kosik, Secretary SCBA, and executive members of our executive committee and ISCORA president Manoj Mishraji and executive committee of ISCORA. Mr. Andrud P. Mai, the junior of Honorable Justice Kanvilkar, Honorable Ma'am, Madam Sanjaya Kanvilkar, and the family members of Honorable Justice Kanvilkar. 
I welcome each one of you on this gathering. Though it's always, whenever we give bid a farewell to any of our judge, it's not a present occasion. We always feel that he should have been more, and government is not listening to you, Mr. Banerjee. They should increase the age of retirement at least till they can work. Justice Kanvilkar, sir, has joined the bar on 10th of February 1982, and he practiced under Mr. P. M. Pradhan, senior advocate at Mumbai. Later, after his persuasion, in 1984, Lord Sif shifted to Delhi, and he started practicing under Mr. B. N. Ganfule, who was the standing counsel of the state of Maharashtra and a leading lawyer. Lordship has been a standing counsel of the state of Maharashtra. He was also a standing counsel for election of election commission of India. He was counsel for Union of India. But the story behind his appointment as election commission counsel it was very interesting. Once the TN session, who was the, the TN session in the election commission of India, who worked a lot for the election reforms. He wanted someone to be appointed who has integrity and who cannot be uh, actually influenced by any side for the Election Commission of India. At that point of time, Lord Chief Justice A.N. Khanvilkar's name was suggested and he was appointed as Counsel for Election Commission of India. Lord Chief has been member executive of SCORA and he has also been member executive of Supreme Court Bar Association. Lordship of Joint Secretary of SCORA also. I have seen Lordship always working in the interest of bar and also a better coordination between bench and bar. I recall one incident when, though it should be lighter note, Lordship objected our President Vikas Singh's protest march. He said once uh, announced that I will do, go for candle march. There was a meeting and Lord Sip said, you can't even think this. That statement can come only from a leader of the bar. And despite our assurance that nothing that sort is going to happen, but he was very strict and he said that no, you can't even think like this. We are really grateful, Lord Sip, that whatever you have contributed to the bar, our lawyers have not been trained for mediation for a long time. I requested Honorable Chief Justice of India that there should be some mechanism where the lawyers should be get opportunity to get the training at mediation, tra mediation and arbitration. And at least judicial academies, which are vacant, they, at least they should be accommodated there. Finally, because of acti active help of Honorable Justice Lalit, Honorable Justice Sanjay Kishan Kaul, and Justice Kanvilkar, this was a reality. And now, prior to this, we had only around 74 mediators. We always request and with Justice Narasimha that we are not counting because we still treat him as member of the bar only. It will take time, sir, to uh, adjust ourselves. And now we have around 250 mediators. Only it was possible only because of the lordship. Lordship was Judge of Bombay High Court for 13 years, thereafter Chief Justice of Himachal Pradesh, almost less, few months lesser than one year, and then in Madhya Pradesh as Chief Justice for more than two years. Three judges who had taken oath with Lordship, Honorable Justice Bobde, Honorable Justice Kanvilkar, and Justice Chandrachud, at least he could see all three of them here in Supreme Court of India. And Two of them are going to be chief, one became chief justice and one is going to be chief justice. And we all are, we all are proud of entire this, that lot of three judges because there was a time when people thought that there will be three judges from Bombay High Court, one by one. Unfortunately, it did not happen, but we are very happy that Lord Sip is here and he blessed all of us. There are four kind of persons, if you d d decide and if you tell narrate in terms of fruits. There are people like grapes who are soft from outside and soft from inside. There are 
people like pomegranate who are hard from outside and soft from inside. Lordship falls in that category. He is a soft looking person, he is like prune. But in, from inside, he is a very hard person. After his being appointed as judge, after a few months, he met me in an accident. And there was a serious problem, and doctors advised him for surgery. It was his willpower, it was his courage, which did not, because of that, he did not go for surgery. He actually, without surgery, he made himself fit, and within six months, he started working again. He is fond of running. He watches cricket. The actual power behind this man is Madam Sanjaya Kanvilkar. Lordship, whenever goes home, he must be jealous because many other judges, who, uh, if you find that the home of Lordship is the most well kept home. And whenever anybody go and come back from there, they start fighting with their own family members. That's why you can't keep this. We have all the facilities. So ma'am, we congratulate you all for all. Lordship, despite coming from a humble background, Lordship's father had a shop in Mulund. And from there, Lordship rose up to this level. It is a great motivation for all of us. We also came from a village background. I studied from a village school. So persons like this, they motivate us to grow in life and achieve something. Because we should have some role models, and you are one of them. Lordship has three daughters, Yugandra, Isani, and Sivani. They are here. I will always say that Lordship you are a champion of this profession. You are not going to retire. Though you have already got Mahanadi Tribunal in 2018, which Lordship terrified. But there are so many other things to go. And we are really grateful to everyone who is present here to welcome this gem of the bar. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pradeep, sir. My mistake, I missed out. The family was also here. May I now request Ms. Nandi Singh to kindly present a bouquet to Mrs. Khanvilka. All the three daughters are also here. May I now request Mr. Vikramjit Banerjee, Learned Additional Solicitor General of India, to kindly deliver his address. The Honorable Chief Justice of India, Honorable Justice Khanwilkar, Honorable Judges of the Supreme Court, um, the President of the Supreme Court Bar Association, the Vice President of the Supreme Court Bar Association, the General Secretary of uh, the Supreme Court Bar Association, fellow additional solicitors general, and my friends of the bar. Uh, Honorable Justice Kanwilkar was born in, on 30th of July, 1957 in Pune, Maharashtra. He pursued his bachelor's in commerce from Mulund College and LLB from KC College of the University of Mumbai. Thereafter, he started his practice in 1982 under Praful Chandra M. Pradhan, practicing primarily in subordinate courts, tribunals, and high court of judicature Bombay, whereby in 1984, he shifted his practice to the Honorable Supreme Court, wherein he was appointed subsequently as a standing counsel for Maharashtra. He was also appointed as the standing counsel for Election Commission of India in 1995, the role in which he continued till his appointment as the judge of, of the Honorable Bombay High Court. He was appointed as an additional judge in the Bombay High Court in 2000 and permanent judge in 2002. Uh, justice, the great thing about what I felt about going through his judgment was, even as a lawyer was actively involved in the constructive development of the law, as showcased by, as amicus for, in the landmark case on the environmental law of the Kanpur Tanneries case, which is MC Mehta versus Union of India, concerning the effluence being 
released in the River Ganga, as well as his involvement in the task force headed by Justice E.S. Venkatramaya to examine the Prevention of Food Adulteration Act in 1954. Uh, Justice Kanwilkar, of course, has been, uh, has been part of various different benches giving landmark judgments. Uh, one of those judgments I, which struck me was Vikas Rao Gavali versus State of Maharashtra, which was authored by Justice Kanwilkar, where he interestingly observed that the quantum of reservation for OBCs ought to be localized, as it is only statutory and not constitutional, while not exceeding the 50% ceiling at the same time. Now, interestingly, I'm given to uh, you know, understand that Justice Kanwilkar, uh, when he was on behalf of the state of Maharashtra, had defended this act, which was uh, Maharashtra Zilla Parishads and Panchayat Samitis Act numerous times. So, uh, the ability to understand and to see both sides of the problem and, and be a, a perfect judge, I think that's a, a fantastic example. Uh, in Noel Harper versus Union of India, another landmark judgment held that the right to association does not include the right to receive unregulated foreign funds. It observed that uh, the amendment to the Foreign Contribution Regulation Act 2010 places reasonable restrictions on NGOs. Uh, the judgment very interestingly advised the NGOs to solicit domestic philanthropy instead of relying on foreign funds. I, the court upheld the amendment stating that would allow the union to monitor transactions and maintain sovereignty of the nation. I think that's in itself an extremely landmark judgment. I think oh, it's something which we should all um, a, B, very, very, uh, Justice Kanwilkar has also been part of the Aadhaar judgment the, on ju uh, Justice Case Puttaswamy versus Union of India and upheld the Aadhaar scheme and its formulation objectives. Justice Kanwilkar has, uh, again, very interestingly uh, been the proponent of transparency in judicial proceedings because he was part of Swapnil Tripathi versus Union of India, whereby the Honorable Court issued detailed guidelines for streaming of Supreme Court cases involving matters of national importance. Uh, most interestingly, which observed that sunlight is the best disinfectant. I think that's a path-breaking judgment in itself. And last but not the least, uh, Justice Kanwilkar's uh, judgment in uh, uh, Common Cause, which uh, when he was part of the Common Cause, which sort of held that uh, which was uh, as a fundamental right, uh, which talked about the right uh, to, uh, for a person to take his own life. Uh, court opined the right to privacy mandated safeguarding of individual choice in the intimate sphere of relating to death and held that the protection of these rights was an emanation of right to privacy. So the expansion of that was, uh, was, has been a part of, uh, Justice Kanwilkar has been a part of that. Now, coming to my personal experience with Justice Kanwilkar, I found him to have razor sharp wit. I also, um, I, whenever I appeared before Justice Kanwilkar, I always uh, saw that he had very great ability to dissect matters immediately. So he could come to the crux of the matter and he could come immediately to the point and there was no need to repeat a point a number of times. And Justice Kanwilkar, in fact, like all of us, and it's happened to me a number of times, when we think we haven't made that point enough, so we go by a number of ways to make that point. Justice Kanwilkar would a number of times remind us that we've got that point, you'd go ahead and make the other point. So I think um, he was very sharp and uh, a brilliant mind. And uh, in some ways, he was always very, very conscious of the court's time, and he would ensure, and again, on, as, as, as a government lawyer, even sometimes when you don't want to do a matter for some reason, Justice Kanwilkar would ensure that you were prepared and you did that matter. So uh, it's something which, and he conducted it with, so, with a large amount of grace and great humor. So it was wonderful, wonderful to appear before him. Uh, in, in conclusion, I will only say this. Sir, we will miss you. Best wishes on your onward journey and uh, may God with you be with you every step of the way. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. I just wish to add here, 
what Vikram Jit sir said about how he was as a judge. I just wish to add, when he was in the bar, now all his juniors are doing so well. We have over here Justice Anruth V. Mai, he was a sitting Gujarat High Court judge, Mr. Shivaji Jadav sir, who was President Scorer, Prashant Kumar sir, Vice President Scorer, Vijit Singh sir, Senior Advocate, Vijay Kumar sir, Senior Advocate. So all his juniors are doing so well. And what I am told by all of them, that except I think Prashant sir, everyone was from not, not from a legal background, and they all used to work 18 hours a day, and that's the reason all his juniors are doing so well professionally. <clears throat> May I now request Mr. Vikas Singh, Senior Advocate, President SCBA, to kindly deliver his address. Honorable the Chief Justice of India, Honorable Justice Khanvilkar, Honorable Judges of this Court, Law Officers of the Government of India, Members of the Family of Justice A.M. Khanvilkar, Members of the Executive Committee of the SCBA, Mr. Manoj Mishra, President SCORA, Members of the Executive of SCORA, Members of the Bar, Ladies and Gentlemen. Even while I was coming onto the podium, the Honorable Chief Justice of India said, no demands today. And I assured him that there are no demands today. But, but there has to be a message where the demand will be inside, which the Honorable Chief Justice of India will definitely come to know, knowing his intellect and his ability to grasp. When I thought of talking about Justice Khanvilkar, I tried to contact people who have been associated with him, people whom, with whom he used to have lunch, people with whom he used to share his chambers. And the only one line which was common everywhere was that he's a workaholic. I said, he's a workaholic that we all know, but you just don't talk about a person being a workaholic on his uh, uh, farewell. You have to talk about the person, persona, his growth story, his motivation, how his life and his journey can inspire young lawyers in this country to take up this profession and reach the highest levels by hard work and dedication. The interesting part of Justice Khanvilkar is, and to that extent I'm fortunate, I share a similar kind of a story in life, that he's a first generation lawyer. He's from humble background. While he was still studying law, he thought that he should try and understand some nuances of practicing law, especially the commercial side. So he went to Mr. Praful Pradhan, who was just across the, very near to where he was staying, his office was in near, dealing in commercial matters. So as a law student, he started going to his office. When he finished his law, which is about six, eight months thereafter, he had yet to complete his company secretaryship. He had, was also doing company secretaryship. But his six, seven months with Mr. Pradhan and the hard work that he put in there prompted Mr. Pradhan to dissuade him from going for company secretaryship at all and say, no, you, you forget company secretaryship, you have to start in the legal profession. Now, somebody who as a student had a ideas cut out that I'll do this and I'll do that and then I'll see how, where I fit in life. This was some kind of a bolt from a blue because the choice was in a sense made by Mr. Pradhan of the future of Justice Khanvilkar in this profession. He started practicing there in, in Bombay High Court. And in the very first week, he was, given, he was given several matters by Mr. Pradhan to argue in, in the High Court. And his first brief was with, just, with the legendary Justice, Justice Pense. And Dr. Justice Khadvilka says that he is a person of my chance, he has come here by luck. I say there is no luck for anybody who does not rise to the occasion. 
in a very short span of time people started noticing him in the bombay high court he was part of a friday group we also have a friday club in our court in the library too he was similarly they had a friday group in bombay there were seven eight lawyers in that group so they used to always talk amongst themselves that the supreme court lawyers are very difficult to you know meet and they have appointments and you know uh, we uh, why can't one of us think of going to the supreme court so in the friday group by elimination it was only justice kanvilkar who had not who was not married and no family obligations that he was told by the rest that everybody had some excuse or the other somebody had a small child somebody had recently married some 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 family commitment so by elimination he was said that you are the only one who doesn't have any of these so you go to delhi now but the important part is that he agreed to take that challenge of course they assured him that if you don't make it there you can always come back we are all there with you your practice here will always be there so even before agreeing with the friday group he said i must first talk to my mentor mr pradhan if only he permits i will go because so far his life career in the legal profession was shaped by mr pradhan who was the sole person behind his joining the profession and behind him getting good matters in the beginning behind him arguing matters who very few lawyers in the first few weeks of their practice get to argue matters in a in a constitutional court he went to mr pradhan mr pradhan of course reluctantly agreed that if you have a vision if you want to do well in life and everybody wherever you are in this country supreme court is the ultimate for the legal community so he felt that there was the spark in justice kanvilkar to come to delhi and make it here he came here justice kanvilkar came and joined the chamber of mr ganpule within one year of joining mr ganpule again being noticed and that is the message i want to give to the youngsters of of this profession that by sheer hard work people noticed his dedication to the brief to the matters to how he used to argue how he used to prepare that within one year in being in 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 uh, uh, delhi he got the uh, uh, standing counsel offer for the state of maharashtra now there was a problem he was not an advocate on record so what they did was he mr bhaspe was his friend he said all right mr bhaspe will be my aor i will be there so both of them were made standing counsels for the state of maharashtra and that is how he really took off in in the supreme court and everybody knew we, we have all seen him i we, i used to share a chamber in the same corridor with uh, justice kanvilkar and i have seen him how hard working he was of course later on mr soli surab ji uh saw the uh, capability in him and requested him to join the central government panel and uh, he was part of almost every important uh, uh, uh case that the union of india fought in those years that is 1989 90 onwards and um, all the big matters of the union of india justice kanvilkar had a say in the sense of either arguing those matters or preparing those matters or briefing those matters and most sought after in the supreme court so this is one profession which i feel and this example of justice kanvilkar is is a live example for all of us that if you are ready to work hard if you are ready to sweat it out if you feel the problems of your client as your own there is no stopping you from success success is one thing where you don't require a godfather you don't require you don't need to be from a, a background of a judicial family the the commonality that i share with him is that i also was in a job i came before resigning i had some 6 months of leave remaining with me i came and i joined mr lr singh i was working with him i used to do his researches and all and after 6 months i realized that yes probably i can resign and come back so i resigned and came and i resigned i remember in june and in july 
I told Mr. L.R. Singh that in elocution, my feet used to shake. I don't know whether I'll be able to argue. I've already resigned my job. So on the very first day in Supreme Court, he gave me three matters to argue. The first matter I remember was before Justice Venkat Chaliya. And I was arguing as sir, sir. And he told me, so to get some, this opportunity, somebody has to trust in you. And Mr. Pradhan trusted in Mr. Khan Wilkar, which was very, 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 very telling because he had no uh, relationship with him. It was only out of sheer merit. Justice Khan Bilkar always rallied about women's rights and was part of the Supreme Court bench that cautioned judges against gender stereotyping while stating that judges must display the greatest extent of sensitivity in judicial approach and language to ensure that there is no traumatization of a prosecutrix during proceedings. On these lines, the court laid down an illustrative list of words and opinions from which judges must desist. The bench observed that even a solitary instance of such order or utterance in court reflects adversely on the entire judicial system of the country, undermining the guarantees to fair justice to all, and especially to victims of sexual violence of any kind from the most aggravated so-called minor offenses. It also asked each high court to formulate a module on judicial sensitivity. Justice Khan Velkar always adopted a humanitarian approach and assessed the consequences of judicial decisions for their bearing on sound public policy. Recognizing that women and children are the vulnerable groups of our society, he pointed out that the first task would be to come out with remedies for domestic violence, child abuse, sexual harassment at workplace, trafficking, and so on. He also spoke on how we owe a human duty towards children, many of whom have been orphaned due to pandemic. He called for a decisive action and emphasized that access to justice must be included indignant on the fringes of society with a special focus of women, children, and the LGBTQ community. Justice Khanvilkar is also a pragmatic judge and has shown a liberal attitude in dispensing justice. Bearing the gifts of sympathy and insight, he has fiercely protected the fundamental rights of citizens as evidenced in the case where bench comprising of Justice Khanvilkar, Justice Mishra, and Justice Chandrachud dismissed a writ petition seeking an injunction against the release of a film an insignificant man documenting the life of Delhi Chief Minister Mr. Kejri, while the bench observed court should be extremely slow in passing restraint order as there can't be curbs on the freedom of speech and expression and all that creative people have the right to enjoy their works in the production of their film. Justice Khanvilkar is a dynamic and a perceptive judge who firmly believes in the use of technology in courts and feels that it is imperative that the legal fraternity reinvent itself and keep abreast with the technological advancements. He said that the world is moving ahead with technology and as the judiciary of the world's largest democracy, we cannot stay behind. He heard that it was time for lawyers to get used to new system of operation. Justice Khan Wilker also authored a judgment in a quorum of three judges allowing petitions seeking live streaming of court proceedings. While emphasizing modernity, he also reminded us to look back at the ancient legal system. Justice Khanvilkar, as a valedictory event in the Constitution Day celebration organized by the Supreme Court of India, spoke about the concept of justice while tracing back to Vedic times, stating that rule of reason, logic, and metaphysics can be seen there. That dharma is an ancient tenet about fulfilling one's duties and responsibilities. He said that the Constitution is a perfect reflection of Vasudeva Kutumbam, and that the need of the hour is to target the clogging dockets and tattered justice delivery system and revisit to indigenize our rich legal system. Justice Kanvilkar on the second J.S. Verma Memorial ADR and Client Counseling Competition 2022 spoke about the importance of ADR and the shortcomings in infrastructure and the lack of awareness pushing into slow strategy. He also spoke of how mediation is picking up across the country and may soon become mainstream resolution mechanism for litigating the public. And now we are, we are told that the parliament is seriously debating a mediation law, which will become a reality soon, which will take this, this initiative in a very uh, correct, in a, in a long, it will do a, go a long way. Ms. Justice Khan Wilker has been extremely dedicated towards betterment of our country. For this, he put an immense hard work and dedication, which earned him the title of a workaholic. He used to have 500, 600 filings in a year, with 12-15 matters on Mondays and Fridays and would be thoroughly prepared for all matters. 
His juniors would recall him working till wee hours in the morning. His juniors have nothing but words of admiration and love for him. Justice Anirudh May, who is present here today of Gujarat High Court, while recounting his experience at Justice Kanvilkar's office, said that he taught all his juniors the value of loyalty. Justice May fondly remembers that one incident when he had a flat tire and stopped by the office late at nine, he was shocked to see Justice Khan Wilker on his desk alone reading a bunch of files. Next day, he again saw him equally surprised to see him fresh and running around in courts for, to appear in 22 matters. Justice Moy spoke of his ability to supervise and nurture the career of junior lawyers, which we all know, we are all aware about. He always wanted his juniors to be thoroughly prepared with the matters and would give them ample opportunity to argue cases. Even when Justice Khan Wilkar had a bed, he would take his juniors out to restaurants for refreshment. This is a message for all our seniors. He had this tradition where he would take all his juniors for lunch or dinner on the last working day before summer and winter. Due to his warm and humble nature, all his associates and staff continue to be in touch with him despite passage of time. Justice Khan Wilkar believes in having a simple lifestyle and the trappings of a materialistic world do not appeal to him. His father had a business in trading, coming from a humble background and being a first-generation lawyer. He is truly a self-made of man of impeccable character. He is an avid reader and would read novels if at all he had time from reading, from reading briefs. He is a foodie and at the same time believes in being fit and has played volleyball and cricket at college level and was also an athlete and a middle distance runner. Justice Khan Wilkar has three daughters, Yogendra, Ishani and Shivani, who are all lawyers practicing at the Bombay High Court. Justice Khan Wilkar leaves behind a legacy of hard work, integrity, erudition and fortitude. His contribution to the development of Indian jurisprudence has won him deep admiration, abounding affection and respect from society at large. As he departs from this court, I have to say that he will be deeply missed by all the members of the bar. Thank you. Thank you, Vikas, sir. It's really inspirational to know that coming from a humble background, a first-generation lawyer, to first establish a very good practice in Supreme Court, and now finally retiring as a Supreme Court judge. <coughs> May I now request Honorable Mr. Justice N. V. Ramanna, Honorable Chief Justice of India, to kindly address the gathering. Honorable Brother Justice uh, A.M. Kanvilka, Brother and Sister Judges of the Supreme Court of India, Brother Justice Ashok Bhushan, uh, Justice L. Narsimha Reddy, former Chief Justice Patna High Court, uh, Sri Vikramjit Banerjee, Additional Solicitor General, Sri Vikas Singh, President, and uh, Mr. Pradeep Kumar Rai, Vice President, Rahul Kausik, Secretary, Manoj Kumar Mishra, President Skora, and uh, law officers, Madam Sanjay Kanvilkar, lovely daughters of Brother Justice Kanvilkar, Yugandara, Ishani, and Sivani, and other family members of Justice Kanvilkar, senior advocates, members of the bar, other distinguished guests, media persons, ladies and gentlemen. Before I start, uh, whatever I want to say, now, by the elaborate uh, speeches made by the President, Vice President, Solicitor, Solicitor General, there is nothing remains. Because Vice President has did so much of investigation, I don't know what is called Josuji or something like that. <laughs> he, he went into informal as the drawing room things, huh? everything. So that, that chapter is covered by him. ASG already discussed about the judgments written by Brother Justice Kanvilkar. Vikas Singh has in detail explained about the professional life of Brother Justice Kanvilkar. So there is nothing much left for me. But however, I will try to say a few things about Brother Kanvilkar. Uh, first of all, I must say thanks to the President, Mr. Vikas Singh, not raising any demands today. You all know that Brother Justice Kanvilkar, because he is one of the members of this 
Supreme Court Bar Association and Vice President of this Kora. He was born in an agriculture family in Pune, 1957 July, and studied in at Pune University and uh, obtained law degree from Mumbai University of Law. He enrolled 10th February 1982 after working some time in Bombay with a senior Praful Chandra Pradhan. After practicing, he shifted his practice to Supreme Court in 1984. And within a short period of time, everybody started recognizing his hard work and sincerity. He got good opportunities. He was uh, appointed for the uh, standing council for the election commission. Thereafter, he was appointed amicus curie in MC Mehta's case about the environmental issue regarding the Ganges pollution and all that. Thereafter, he was elevated as a judge of the Supreme, additional judge of this Bombay High Court in 29th March 2000 and a permanent judge on 8th April 20, 2002. And he was elevated as a Chief Justice of Himachal Pradesh High Court in 2013 and thereafter he was transferred to Madhya Pradesh High Court and worked there till 2016, September. Uh, May. Then he was elevated on 13th May 2016 to the Supreme Court. This is Kanvilkar, is a hard working judge, is a workaholic, that is, the, that is the impression of each and everyone. And he is a very disciplined judge. Whatever assignment we give with honesty and commitment, he fulfills it. It is a great quality of justice. Kanvilkar. His work ethic is clear for all to see. And he authored more than 187 judgments, reported judgments, and nearly 8,446 cases in the Supreme Court. I want to say three important judgments according to me. There are a number of other judgments. One is Swapnali Tripathi versus Supreme Court of India, where writing majority judgment made live streaming of the court proceedings a possibility. And uh, in the constitutional bench in Public Interest Foundation versus Union of India, where the important judgment to clean up the politics, which was made disclosure of criminal antecedents of contesting candidates mandatory. Third, another important judgment is Kalpana Mehta versus Union of India, where this is Kanvilkar was a member of the constitutional bench which held the judicial notice that uh, judicial notice of parliamentary standing committee reports can be taken. These are the very progressive judgments which he contributed for the development of law in these areas. Apart from that, several other important judgments, you are all aware of that. Now, he is also chairman of Mahanadi Water Dispute Tribunal. In spite of pandemic, other issues he regularly used to conduct the proceedings. In addition to that, on administrative side, he is the chairperson of the Supreme Court Legal Service Authority, and he actively promoted the use of technology in functioning of the committee. He has developed a portal, Supreme Court legal service authority online portal which enable access to everyone. It's a very important portal where anybody can access anywhere in the country or world to know about the services available and the pending of the cases which was engaged by the legal service authority. Apart from that, we have seen two days back we inaugurated the Supreme Court Legal Service Authority building, that is the office, which is a very art of state of art building, which helps the Supreme Court members, advocates particularly, and the litigants, a very a comfortable place to use the facility. 
In addition to that, as a judge of Bombay High Court and a Chief Justice of Madhya Pradesh High Court, he has encouraged and constituted special teams to develop technology and websites and updating the court proceedings. Lot of things he did. The efforts of the brother Kanwilkar in digitization of the High Court of Madhya Pradesh are still admired. And after his elevation, he come and he was in the Supreme Court. He started, he tried in his, be in his best to improve the computerization in the Supreme Court. And uh, as the chairman of the computerization committee in the Supreme Court, he played a very significant role in launching the faster software, which is that fast and secure transmission of electronic records throughout the country. In addition to that, as a collegium judge, he is a strong supporter of me and Brother Justice Lalit, me and uh, Justice Kanvilkar, three of us, cleared more than 250 appointments in the last one year. All the credit goes to <laughs> my brother judges. And when the meetings takes place, he is very particular about the, he used to meticulously read the entire background, file, IB reports, opinion of other judges, everything meticulously. And uh, thereafter, he used to try to take care of the weaker sections and women, particularly whether their cases are properly considered or not. This is a great thing. Brother Justice Kanvilkar has worked very hard and contributed a lot to the system. And now, even though he is retiring today, I am certain that he will continue to work hard in some capacity or other. And uh, apart from that personal side, I was told that he is an avid runner of, in his young days and has even run all the way from Mumbai to Aliabag, a distance of 100 kilometers. Perhaps post-retirement he will finally be able to spend time with the family and take care of his health and fitness. I, on behalf of my brother and sister judges, wish Brother Justice Kanvilkar a happy and healthy post-retirement life. I wish all the family members very best for the future. And uh, at this time, I want to appreciate the hard work done by Madam Sanja, who has sacrificed her other activities and stood like a rock in the family, and his daughters who are stand by his father all the times and helped him to work very effectively in the system. I thank all of them and thank you for giving me the opportunity. Thank you, sir. Justice Kanvilka was always very fond of technology. He, was, he really wanted to improve the system in Supreme Court and a lot was done in his tenure. But I was once told by uh, Justice Puspain Kaurav, who is a sitting Delhi High Court judge, who was then the Advocate General of Madhya Pradesh, that how Justice Kanvilkar had improved the listing, in, listing of cases in Madhya Pradesh High Court. And the whole system was streamlined because of Justice Kanvilkar. Thank you, sir. May I now request Honorable Mr. Justice A.M. Kanvilkar, Judge Supreme Court of India, to deliver his address. Chief Justice of India, Justice Ramanna, President of the Supreme Court Bar Association, Mr. Vikas Singh, Vice President of the Bar Association, Mr. Rai, Mr. Kaushik, Secretary, one of the popular secretaries of the Bar Association I have come across. The President of the Chairperson of the SCORA, that is Supreme Court Advocates and Record Association. My esteemed brother judges and sister, brother and sister judges sitting here. I thank them 
for coming here. Justice Reddy and Justice Kaurav from Delhi High Court, all the senior advocates and members of the bar, ladies and gentlemen. It has been a long journey, one would say, of 40 years. I am still trying to grapple with the thought that I just came in the profession. I'm, I'm still there or I'm leaving this profession. I would say that this profession has given me a lot. And today, whatever recognition is there, it is because of this profession. And the heights which I could achieve to the extent possible is all because of the strength of the Supreme Court Bar Association, where I practiced and I was a member, and the SCORA, that is Supreme Court Advocates and Record Association. I was wondering yesterday when I visited Bar the, to find the figures. When I was the office bearer of SCORA, we hardly had members. We were persuading advocates and record to become members of that association. The number has now swelled to 2,500. I'm really glad about that. When come, you talk about Supreme Court Bar Association, I was really impressed to see that the membership is now 15,000, which is almost like a constituency for a corporation election. So, <laughs> and because Mr. Vikas Singh has been repeatedly coming again and again, and he's, nobody is leaving him or Mr. Kaushik. I am glad about that. Friends, it is the compliment offered by the Chief Justice of India to Mr. Vikas Singh. I would repeat that he has good IB, uh, perhaps, uh, set up. And the Chief Justice of India's IB is also no less. He also got some information which I was really astonished to because I'd never shared that information with anyone here. I, I don't think I, have, I must have shared that. But even he disclosed some inputs which I really appreciate, both of them. Uh, for the young members of the bar, all that I would say is today, what am I, what, whatever I am today, it is all because the journey started from Mumbai. I was, as was informed by already, uh, 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 the president informed all of you that it was Mr. Prafulla Pradhan who forced me rather. He did not give me any option. He, I started from Mumbai and came here. So the thanks, uh, I would say, uh, it is Thanksgiving, uh, this opportunity I would use at Thanksgiving for him. And uh, then after reaching here, it is, I joined the Office of Justice, uh, uh, Mr. Viran Ganpule. And from there, the journey started. B during this time, in due course, as I w you, you were already told, the Judges who encouraged me also should be mentioned here. It is Justice A.P. Sain, who was very caring at times and, assisted, uh, and guided me uh, in some cases. It is Justice Venkat Rama, who later on went on to become Chief Justice of India. And thereafter, the journey went on. Uh, it is right up to Justice J.S. Verma at the end that I was, my name was recommended in 1997 and Justice Chandrachud is also here and Justice Bobde. Three of us, we have sailed up to this destination and Justice Chandrachud's journey still continues. So I have already completed 22 years and four months exactly as on date. And during this time, whosoever really guided me. I am grateful to all of them, be it my uh, professional gurus, name was mentioned, 
प्रफुल प्रधान वी एन गणपुले देन फ्रॉम द मेंबर्स ऑफ द बार सीनियर मेंबर्स ऑफ द बार सोली सोराब जी जी रामस्वामी एवरी वन रियली गाइडेड मी एंड दैट इज हाउ आई कुड रीच दिस डेस्टिनेशन सो आई एम रियली ग्रेटफुल टू ऑल ऑफ देम ऑल्सो टू माई कलीग्स एंड माई टीम अबाउट विच इट वॉज ऑलरेडी मिस्टर कौशिक ऑल्सो मैंशन द जूनियर्स मिस्टर अनु जस्टिस अनिरुद्ध माई प्रशांत कुमार शिवाजी जाधव एंड विश्वजीत सिंह विजय कुमार आई एम नॉट एबल टू लोकेट हिम हियर नाउ सो ही वॉज हियर समेर येस येस ही इज देयर सो विजय कुमार ऑल ऑफ देम दे वर्क हार्ड really that actually i was taking inspiration from them it is not uh, that i was working hard and they were following me i was taking inspiration from all of them who worked with me and i am grateful to all of you thank you so much for coming here in such large number i am really touched thank you so much thank you sir it's an emotional moment for everyone most of the people have practiced here with sir <coughs> now i'll read the message given by honorable mr justice am khanwilkar judge supreme court of india for the members of the bar i feel humbled to be writing these parting words after associating for over four decades with dispensation of justice as a lawyer first including for over 16 years as a member of this august body SCBA and then as a judge for over 22 years i have been immensely benefited from the assistance rendered by the bar the SCBA and its members hold an important position in the history of the highest constitutional court of our country i firmly believe that the development of law is a product of the collaborative effort of the bar and the bench for the young members of the SCBA i wish the best of times always for the lawyers of the future my word of caution is wherever you practice avoid obfuscation and water poetry and abide by higher morals of law and life i thank you all for being part of a wonderful journey and going to cherish and treasure always thank you so much for the love and affection bestowed on me for all these years thank you sir for all these kind words for the members of the bar and the encouraging words for the younger members of the bar to present a memento on behalf of scba to honorable mr justice am khan wilka judge supreme court of india i request mr vikas singh president scba mr pradeep kumar rai vice president scba and the whole executive com committee scba to kindly join us on the stage chalo chalo May I now request Mr. Rohit Pandey, Joint Secretary, SCBA, to kindly give vote of thanks. Sorry. Thank you, Rahul. We are grateful to Honorable Mr. Justice N. M. Ramna, Honorable the Chief Justice of India, for accepting our invitation for presiding the function. His kindness is always appreciated by the SCBA. We are thankful to Honorable Mr. Justice M. Khan Wilkar, the Supreme Court of India, and his family members for accepting our invitation to attend this function. The meaning of retirement is getting discharged from duty, but it is merely a change of duty. Your Lordship's contribution towards the bar will always be remembered. Your Lordship. has headed several committees 
and his headship has in some way or other benefited the public at large. We would also always seek your guidance for the welfare of the bar. We would like to thank Honorable Judges of Supreme Court of India, Honorable Retired Judges of Supreme Court of India, Justice uh, Anrudh Mai, Justice Kauro, Honorable Justice uh, Ashok Bhusan, sir, is here. Thank you so much to be here, sir, for gracing the occasion. I thank Mr. Vikram Jeet Banerjee, London Attorney, London uh, Additional Solicitor General of India, London Law Officers, Senior Members, and Members of the Bar, Mr. Manoj Misra, President Iskora, Mr. Sinhasis Mukherjee, Vice President Iskora, Mr. Devraj, Secretary Iskora, Mr. V.K. Vansal, Learned Secretary General, Mr. Rajesh Goyal, and other registrars of the Supreme Court, press, journalists, print, electronic media persons, SCBI staff, office bearers, and members of the Executive Committee of different bar associations, other distinguished guests, and respected members of the bar for gracing the occasion. Kindly join us for high tea at ground floor. <laughs>